Okay. All right, folks, we're going to be uh, starting up here in just a second with uh, our, our main meeting presentation. Howard K0 LKD is going to talk about uh, mobile radio, especially in the HF bands, I think. Is that right? And um, Howard is a, an expert because if you haven't seen his uh, rig in his vehicle, you're in for a real treat. I think he's going to offer uh, the chance for people to go out and have a look at his rig after he finishes his presentation. Anyhow, uh, thanks again for everybody to be here. One other quick announcement. If you have not signed the uh, sign-in sheet that Mike at WA8AAZ is circulating, please do that. We need to know that you're here. And thanks all of you for being here. If I'm not here at the end, my daughter just arrived on an airplane. I might have to leave. But if I'm not here at the end, I want to remind everybody that our next meeting is August the 6th, I think it is, that Friday night. And it's here starting at 7 o'clock in this room. So, Howard, thanks a lot for doing this. So take it away, K0LKD. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, <coughs> kind of give an overview here about what I wanted to do. And uh, basically... <coughs> talk mostly about my setup, but I had some few basic uh, overview stuff, fairly high level uh, of uh, radio insulation, and to include, uh, I've got both UHF, VHF, plus HF installation as well. And if you really want nitty gritty, you need to talk to Ross, you know, KM4, uh, KHZ, yeah, HZM, and uh, N, yeah. And uh, he's got the real details, so I'm going to give you the, 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 the big picture and then go from there. Next. So uh, this is based on my own experience, and uh, but a lot of the information I got is K0GB's website. Uh, it's pretty extensive, and uh, it's got a lot of good stuff, so it's at K0GB.com. And also the 3905 Century Club mobile installation guides uh, uh, by uh, K -Z what, K0WJ are also pretty good, a lot of pictures and so on and so forth. So as I mentioned, I have the capability to go from uh, 80 meters to 70 centimeters. And basically what I have is uh, uh, HF-wise, I have a K, uh, KX3, with a 100 watt amp and a screwdriver antenna that the mini Tar Heel, and then for UHF VHF, have a Kid One, Kidwood dual band, uh, 50 watt transceiver, and then for 220, I have a, uh, a, a TSC nine or 9000. It's a Titera, I think, or one of those those brands. Next, no. There, and, and this is, again, based on K0BG. There's four you know, basic steps. First, decide what you want to do, UHF, VHF, HF, or both, and then figure out what kind of transceivers you want to use. Usually smaller uh, is a lot easier to fit uh, in the, in the, into the, the vehicle, but all the vehicles are different and there's a wide variety of vehicles and there's a wide variety of radios. So part of it is figuring out <coughs> what you want to do, what you can do, and then figuring out how to, how to fit, fit it in. Second part is antenna. There are many types, dep again, depending on what you want to do. Remotely tuned uh, HF mobile antennas, often called screwdrivers, are really a good choice for HF. I started out with a uh, with a uh, fixed, you know, with coils, and uh, you know, you got to stop change coils if you want to change bands, or the, you know, the ham sticks or similar things like that. So, uh, I've been pretty happy with the screwdriver antenna, and along with that, I have a a, a controller, uh, the West Mountain Radio uh, Target Tuner controller for that which will store memory positions for different bands and different things. So it makes it a little easier when you're on the road <coughs> in terms of tuning around. Third is the insulation, and uh, safety is really important in this case. And uh, radio gear needs to be installed permanently. By that, I mean it should be anchored well. And, uh, you know, if you stop suddenly or stop a lot so sooner than you planned, you don't want the stuff flying around. 
and uh, it also should be mounted to avoid as much distraction as possible so you'll see if you look at my rig I've got most of the stuff mounted on the dash and that way I don't have to look down it was one of the things I wanted to avoid was looking down fiddling around the only thing I have down is uh, or I have to look a little bit is the is the controller for the uh, for the uh, tar heel and some of that's automated now so I don't have to do that much and uh, then next is the <coughs> wiring and uh, the the general rule was never use existing wiring unless the accessory sockets are rated for the expected load you know 15 to 20 amps or so <coughs> and uh, uh, direct individually fused connections to the battery are recommended except they mentioned the EIS engine idle shutoff situations where you don't want to bypass the battery and some of those control circuitry and I'm sure there are more sophisticated things out there than even that and uh, one of the st statements was uh, the, this uh, author mentioned was uh, hybrid vehicles are really a, a real tough uh, choice because of all the noise they make and some of the higher battery voltages that are involved with the thing so the recommendation was if it's if it's a hybrid don't <laughs> but you can probably get away with uh, you know some of the handhelds or UHF VHF stuff I think fairly well next transceivers there's a wide variety of radios the smaller the better in my opinion that will work HF transceivers should have also they ought to have built-in antenna tuner uh, and what I'm using is KX3 also have a KX2 that I've used mobile as well and the tuners and those are really pretty good in fact some some people claim it'll it'll tune a nail <laughs> I don't know if that's really true or not but uh, but uh, that makes a big difference <coughs> radios with a remote control head are usually easier to install and that's the case with the Kenwood Kenwood is uh, at least I you know in my situation I found it that way the Kenwood uh, is uh, mounted on the the control head is mounted on the dash and the main thing is mounted under one of the rear seats so uh, all you gotta do is string some cables and and uh, that has worked out quite well for me for the last well, three or four or five years I guess handheld radios normally have less power and especially if you use the uh, the little the mobile antenna that comes with them but they can easily be used with uh, with success so and if you have you know use what you have yeah. and uh, if that's all you have you can try it out see how well it works it's fairly easy to put a I think a magma antenna up you know, at least to see how things are going to work so again part of it is like Harry was talking about about selling a ham fest you need to have a plan you need to figure out what it is you want to do and uh, I've used this stuff on uh, on several road trips that turned out to be you know on the road for six weeks 3,500 miles or so and you find a variety of capabilities are really really come in handy sometimes so um, uh, that was one of the reasons I wanted to have a wide of, uh, capability as possible you know because you never know what you're going to run into next and here's some pictures of a variety of installations that are there and uh, Harry picked out uh, some pictures and you can see a variety of things where people have plugged in and different types of antennas and uh, so uh, again uh, I try to avoid uh, stuff down too low because if you're fiddling around trying to tune uh, it takes your eyes off the road and so but some vehicles it may not be possible to mount stuff up where it's easy to see I don't know there's there's the one there that's mounted up at eye level more or less there's a couple with the uh, uh, trunk lip type mounts on the side which is what I have on the back as you'll see and uh, and of course the standard mag mount will work as well and here's uh, my Saturn it's an 06 Saturn view and uh, you can see in the middle top picture there there's the 220 rig on the left 
I have uh, the Kenwood in, in the middle and the KX3 on the right. The only problem with that uh, setup is that the KX3 is kind of on the edge of the airbag. One of the things that you need to be mindful of is where your airbags are. So if one of those goes off, you could <laughs> find yourself <laughs> with gear splattered all over the place and yourself as well. So uh, again, it's it's usually a trade-off. And I spent a lot of time just sitting in a vehicle thinking and placing stuff and playing around. And I have two speakers, one for the UHF VHF, one for the 220 rig, and then I use the audio output from the KX3 I plug into the aux jack of the car radio. And uh, I could have put another speaker in, but that seems to work reasonably well for me. And so side view of the, of the vehicle with the tar heel on the back, uh, a couple of more pictures of the tar heel antenna. The, the one I picked was what I figured was the largest I could get away with that could be reasonably supported on the back uh, trunk lid. And that's, uh, I think, a, a K400 type mount. And uh, um, generally, it's worked pretty well. I think I've had that on the car three or four years at least, maybe m maybe five. I, I don't really remember exactly. And it's done pretty well, although recently I've started to have some, some vibration noise on 20 meters. And I think the fingers that move up and down the coil on the screwdriver have gotten a little corroded and need to be cleaned up a little better. It works okay on 40 and s some of the, the lower bands, so uh, I'm, I'm still working with that, but that's after, you know, at least four years sitting out there. The other two pictures show my two, I have two antennas. One is a, a dual band uh, VHF, UHF, and one's the 220, and I've got the diamond motor mount, which will r let you rotate the uh, antennas down at a 90 degrees. And uh, where I go three days a week into a parking garage, you know, there's not room otherwise, so that's the only way I can make it work. And there's a remote switch I do have down on the console inside that I can reach without looking at it and uh, fold those suckers down, and it works pretty good. Now, when I have the HF uh, installed, I have a little clip, a gutter clip on the side where I have to get out and hook that up. Otherwise, it's going to bang as you go through. But uh, that's the way I ended up setting setting my uh, setup up. And as I told somebody, I said, you know, your mileage will vary depending on your vehicle, what you got, what you really want to do, and, uh, and uh, you know, the various options you can you can work. So... Next, and here's some uh, mobile s stuff. You can, like I said, you don't have the power, but you can, uh, you can usually uh, hang something fairly easy. And with a mag mount, cigarette lighter adapter, you don't have to worry about uh, a lot of power, and uh, and uh, speaker mics, stuff like that. So that will work. No, not really. I don't think it pulls that much power. Because it's such a small contact and it's just a press. I haven't really had that, uh, <laughs> that problem that I'm aware of. Okay. Here's some other mounting configurations for mobile stuff. Next. Yeah, antennas. Uh, let's see. We're going to, yeah. I mentioned some of this before. So, remotely tuned antennas are a good choice. Uh, a number of advantages over monobanders include retuning while underway, and uh, this can often be automated in reducing potential uh, distractions. I've got mine set up with uh, memory stored in in the radio. I just rotate it or hit a button and, and flip it to that position, and the Antenna, the uh, controller will auto automatically move the uh, the uh, screwdriver uh, coil to the right position, and so you don't have to worry about uh, trying to find the, the lowest thing. It, the uh, controller has a uh, I didn't mention, but it has a uh, SWR bridge built in. So 
once you hit the tune button, set on the frequency, hit the tune button, and it'll sit there and hunt until it finds the lowest SWR. And then you can store that position, you know, in the memory on the controller, and it will uh, then remember that. So you can go back to it. So you've got uh, <coughs> uh, a number of, uh, of uh, potential things that way that works out pretty good. At least I've had good luck with it. Some of the other choices include the Scorpion 780, which is a, is a very efficient, but it's big and rugged and rather expensive. You know, we're talking $800, $900 or more, depending on when you get all the stuff. But they're guaranteed for life, according to the, to the, the site. Uh, lesser choices included the Tar Heel and the Maritron, which, uh, which I opted for. And again, I don't think I could have hung a, a, a Scorpion on the back of the tailgate of the, <laughs> of the SUV. Um, in, in, uh, some antennas have special mounting requirements. Sometimes it takes a special bracket, <coughs> especially the bigger ones, the Scorpions and that sort of thing, or a custom mounted thing. And it's really important to get 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 grounds and and uh, RF suppression and, and uh, that sort of thing set up. Otherwise, you can have some issues. For VHF UHF, I mentioned I added the diamond motorized uh, tilt mount, and uh, it works really quite well. And uh, I couldn't probably keep UHF VHF on the in the vehicle, given where we have to go three days a week. So. That's uh, that's uh, been really useful. Next. <laughs> I don't know, Harry, you picked this out. I don't know where you got this one, but uh, you got you got mag mounts, lip mounts, all over the place. Trailer hitch mount and truck bed mount. Although I'm uh, trailer hitch mounts, unless they're really well bonded, bonded and and, and grounded. Uh, may not be the best in the world, and you see some even more than that it's occasionally. So <laughs> I'm not sure what this guy's got inside, but uh, he's certainly got plenty on the outside. Next. And here's a variety of mounts. Uh, magmatic mount, the, uh, the one on the third one from the left is, I think, the one I have uh, mounted on the side, and it's, uh, it's stood up quite well. And uh, there's a couple other styles there. So this thing's been on the car continuously for probably four to five years. So I haven't had any complaints with that. Next. Oh, yeah. Here's uh, some examples of the, I think, the Scorpion as well as some of the others. And uh, I uh, I found this being an old farm boy. I couldn't resist the tractor and the, and the, uh, and the uh uh, scorpion mount on it, and this guy Leon, Leon K0LU, I had to include his call just to say, but uh, there are a few of those around, and uh, um, I, you know, growing up working and running, I never run anything quite like that, but uh, you know, we're talking a tractor here, it's probably three to five hundred thousand dollars, you know, so air conditioned, computerized, all kinds of stuff, so why not have an HF radio? You know, you got plenty, plenty of real estate for that, and then the, the usual trunk, uh, trunk mounted kind of thing. Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, uh, I mentioned again, permanently mount, avoid uh, avoiding magnets. You know, wedged in blocks of wood, spring clamps, Velcro, or anything less is not safe in the event of a crash. And airbag locations really need to be factored in. And I was talking with Ross about that. And, and uh, a lot of these cars, you know, have an extensive airbag system. So you really got to be careful about that, not only from where you mount the radios, but not drilling into the airbag <laughs> if you're drilling holes. Yes? Bank mount. Be careful if you're running the coax in on top of the door because you might have side curtain airbags on top of the door. So don't just run the coax in through the top of the door with the magnet. Yeah, okay, good point. Yeah, I've got some on mine, and uh, fortunately I've been able to work around it. So it becomes a real... Um, the door or something to get... Yeah, you run down to the side. Uh, bags are, you know, down to here when they pull up. Really depends on the car. Yeah, it varies. Some have 10, 12 airbags. Yeah. 
So it's a, it's a challenge in some cases. Yeah. And then try to minimize the amount of gear so you minimize distractions, I mean, looking down or looking away or whatever. I think I've been lucky with my uh, Saturn. I haven't had to do a lot of uh, hole drilling or do a lot of, uh, of uh, extra stuff to get things to work. And I did do some grounding on the trunk lid on the, on the back, and uh, uh, I haven't had a lot of noise. I have a little ignition noise, and uh, it, uh, the, the uh, noise blanker takes care of that. Next see what we got is that it? yeah uh, and so I haven't had a lot of a lot of problem uh, I, again just to reiterate and reiterate direct fuse both positive and negative leads uh, that's kind of been the accepted practice I think and there's ways to feed leads through the vehicle firewall if you do that in fact I went to the to the uh, dealer basically and got one of their mechanics to feed it through i mean i probably could have gotten it done but it, they know the vehicle better than i do or find somebody like ross and let him do it <laughs> and uh, that sort of thing and then the uh, there are exceptions the engine idle shut off has a battery monitoring system that you ought to be careful about circumventing could cause some problems Although I found out that uh, some vehicles that do have accessory power, that's at a rate of 15 to 20 amps, which I didn't realize. I was talking at the one of the luncheons a couple of weeks ago and they mentioned that. So that could make it really easy if you find one of those. In fact, Pete's, one of Pete's trucks has had four of them, I think, that were rated 15 to 20 amps scattered around the, the pickup. So they're, some of the newer vehicles could be, could be quite a bit easier. Next. Yes. Have you ever been stopped by the police uh, when you have your rig on or talking on it? No, never have had an encounter with the police. I have occasionally going through the guard gate at uh, at uh, Walter Reed. Uh, had one guy, one civilian cop, mention about you know blocking the view. Well, nothing I have really blocks the view. If you go out and see, you'll see that. Uh, and that's the only time I've had anybody raise any questions. A lot of people look at me kind of funny sometimes, but no, I've never had any problem. And partly is that I don't often do a lot of of uh, operating on the air, I mean, when I'm traveling, and I figure there's enough distractions without competing with the local traffic. But, uh, but anyway, that's kind of what I did. It's worked out, and I've been reasonably happy with... Uh, with how things work, and I mentioned the KX3. I have, uh, I failed to mention I have a 100 watt amp under under the, the passenger seat, so I can run a 100 watt mobile, you know, going down the road without a whole lot of trouble. And I have, you know, made some, made some significant contacts. It's like anything else; it's a location, antenna, propagation, you know. So that applies almost to everything you do. So anyway, any any other questions, Ron? I know you don't have a garage. Do you bring your stuff in at night? No. Do you leave it out in front? Oh, yeah. I think they're in a really safe neighborhood. In fact, I, I think I probably uh, took a chance, but when we travel, we go to three locations. We go to Kansas, Colorado, uh, um, Texas, and we stay at, uh, at the same motel locations at all three places. And I used to take all that stuff out and drag it in and put it back in in the morning. This time, I sort of half covered it up, but I left it in the car and we got by with no problem. Yes? So with the antenna being lip mounted in the trunk, on top of the trunk, in the rear, right? in, in your on, case, the side, yeah. on the side, yeah. so, and the grounding system is really the, the entire car which is in front of you, so you will have a directional antenna. Have you physically noticed that? No, not so but much. I'm sure it's there. I mean, I'm sure it's directional, and the stuff you read says, you know, it's what's underneath the antenna is, is, is really makes it more effective. But that's a little hard to do when you don't, unless you have a pickup bed or truck bed or something like that. But, uh, you know, reception has been good. Uh, it's hard to tell when you're moving and turning around, uh, stuff like that. But uh, generally, it's it's worked okay. Yes. 
have a radio head mounted on your dashboard, right? Yes. Do you have a dashboard airbag for the passenger? I do on one side, and that's why I said the KX3 is right on the edge. You know, I probably need to, I need to move that a little bit, and uh, out, yeah. and out, and that could launch the head right for you. Yeah, it would be the KX3 itself, <laughs> but, but it's not directly over. It's right on the edge, as Ross says. <laughs> Deployment site. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a mortar, not a cannon. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, yes, Mike. Howard, do you have any experience with the glass mounted VHF antennas? No, I haven't. I've seen them. I've not read about them, but I've never tried them. Yes, Bill. Well, you may have covered this, but I was engaged. Did you talk about logging, how you log your contacts while you're Actually, I didn't <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> good point. That's a good point. And uh, I do have logbook and stuff, and uh, I would probably have my wife, if somebody gone with me, uh, whoever's the passenger, do the logging, you know, kind of stuff. Because that is a, uh, uh, that's something you either got to stop and operate from a fixed location or or have somebody can fill it in as you're going along. Yes? I was just going <laughs> 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 That would allow you to do that. Uh, you might. You might. I haven't really thought about that one. Any other questions? So if it's not too dark, we can, uh, you know, if you want to come out, I'll be glad to have you, you know, take a look and see what it's really set up. Uh, and uh, again, it's it's worked well for me. And uh, but you know, like anything else, you end up tinkering with it and modifying it. And as Ross says, I need to m make some moves on on that one radio. The problem with that is some of the cables are or that come with the KX3 are a little short. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to work that, or use a KX2, which is somewhat smaller. Okay, that's it. So thanks, folks. We're going to end informally and in, uh, by transitioning out to the parking lot if you want to. Otherwise, thanks, everyone, for being here. Thanks again to Kurt, KM4JOA, for the refreshments. And uh, next meeting is here in this room at 7 o'clock on the 6th of August. Pete, did you have another announcement? Chairs? chairs? Well, we, we found the chairs down, so we can leave them where they are, I think. But put them, oh, I'm sorry, put them on the table. And if you have any of your trash that's left over from your, your, uh, your hefty meal back there, be sure and put it in the trash can that Kirk is pointing out right now. Thanks, everyone.